Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Fret Success Guitar Show. An interesting person here to talk a little bit about his company. Not necessarily a guitar player in the main instance of what he does, um, but he started a company that actually takes a different approach to a fundamental item that we use in guitar playing, the plectrum, or pick as you call it over in North America. Uh, here we are with uh, Adam Chesson from Tree Picks. Hi Adam, how are you doing? Hey, really good. Thanks for having me. No, absolutely. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Um, I found your picks through like a Facebook ad you were running and, and checked it out and thought, oh, this is interesting because I'm into the kind of environment and offsetting carbon impacts and definitely trying to reduce my plastic output. Um, and then when I saw it and then saw you were in Calgary, I thought, well, I have to message this guy and see if we can meet up and chat. So I uh, really appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, and, uh, pleasure to be here. I Love meeting like-minded people. So you obviously have a guitar background. You played and yeah, I do. Um, so I born and raised in Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. uh, in Cape Breton, and back there, like music's a very big part of the culture. Mm -hmm. um, like you know, every house kind of has a guitar in it or a piano or that kind of thing. So um, kind of grew up playing. I didn't really sort of get into it till I was in high school, um, but you know, kind of very musical. Like went through the um, school band program, all that kind of thing, and you know, musical family. And um, it was more so in high school that I kind of started getting more into guitar. And then um, I studied music in university. Um, jazz saxophone was my major. Oh, wow. Um, so I, I did that at Dalhousie in Halifax. Um, but along the way, kind of started playing other instruments, um, guitar, fiddle, piano, you know, mandolins, all those kind of things. Um, I'm sort of like a, a jack of all trades, master of none kind of. Mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to instruments. And, but um, yeah, and then uh, I moved to Alberta about 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and that's when the, the, uh, the addiction of collecting guitars <laughs> and buying them sort of got uh, sort of full-blown. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there, done that, uh, kind of trying to limit my guitar purchases nowadays just because funds, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you just end up not having places to put them, and it's like, okay, I'll have that one for that instance and this one for that instance, and then you're like, hang on, let's just try and use these a bit more that I've got and not really just be a fanboy of gear, but it's kind of an obsession and, I don't know, a curse a bit in a way that you... Yeah, I find what I've been doing like the last few years, I've, I haven't really got many new ones, but now what I'll do is I've sort of like reached my limit. I don't want to say limit, but like I have, um, you know, I still have a wish list, but what I'll do is I'll buy something now that is like totally outside of my sort of wheelhouse or mm -hmm. want. So, like, uh, a couple of years ago, I bought a Flying V. Oh, cool. Which is, like, not really, you know, the kind of music I play a lot, but it was a ton of fun to yeah, play. Yeah, like, yeah. It was just, I loved playing it. It was a blast. Um, so, like, I kept that for, like, a year or two mm -hmm. and, you know, just then traded it for something else. And, yeah. You know, so I'm kind of, that's sort of where I am right now when it comes to that stuff. That's quite um, a cool way of going about it, really. Yeah, so it doesn't really cost me a lot of money mm -hmm. at that point. But, you know, it's, like... With no desire to keep a flying V for a long time, but mm -hmm. loved every second of it while I had it, and then you know trade that, and then you know I, I bought a, an arch top, you know, mm -hmm. and so I'm playing that for a little bit, and so it, it's kind of a way to keep it fresh, I find. As a guitarist, you've always got this kind of need and want to try different things, and new gear comes out all the time, and you've not tried everything because there's so many guitars out there that mm -hmm. it's hard to really. You can't just buy one every time and then store it. I mean, I think that's the way we should be looking at instruments more. Is this, and especially. In Calgary, you've got Long and McQuaid that rent equipment out if you need to kind of try it and play it for like a day, a week, a month or whatever. Totally. I think that system is really cool and not something from England was really a prevalent thing that was happening. So, oh, really? Yeah, no, you yeah. could rent it, but it wasn't like you wouldn't have a big, massive catalogue of instruments you could rent and oh. stuff. So oh. it's really interesting to see that kind of aspect. And it's kind of what you're doing, but holding it for a bit longer. And yeah, and you know, it's sort of like taking it for a test drive. Yeah. You know, and like before I bought my last vehicle, I rented it and drove to Vancouver. <laughs> so and then, you know, I was like I drove for a weekend and you know, kind of put a few kilometers on it and I was like I really like this and so, you know, I was kind of thinking about it and I bought it. So, I think it's, you know, a great idea to do with an instrument too. If you could like rent, you know, if there's say a certain Les Paul that you're into, mm -hmm. you know, if you could rent that and and I, I know Long McQuaid too. I'm, I'm pretty sure like they have like a rent to buy kind of thing yeah. too. Like you can buy it out if mm -hmm. you really like that particular acoustic or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, that's pretty sweet, really, when you think about it. I yeah. think I'm going to look into doing that more. And just for doing like gear demos and stuff, it's quite nice to be able to rent them, try them out, and give them back and that sort of thing for YouTube. So watch out for that. Um, so moving on to Tree Picks, mm -hmm. I'd love to know because it's quite a unique company. I don't really know 
I've not looked into other people that do this sort of thing, but it's definitely something that's really new on my radar, wooden picks and how they sound and how they play. And I've, I bought them about a couple of weeks ago and love them. They're amazing. They're so much better than plastic picks. I just, the tone and the, the, they're just less, they don't have that kind of clicky sound that, especially an acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. it has a bit more of a mellow tone. You don't, when you're like recording acoustic guitar, I find that it has, you know, tendency to be a bit flappy and clicky and you're picking up a lot of pick noise, but with this pick, with the range of wooden picks, it doesn't tend to have that problem. You're not having to EQ the top end and balance that kind of clicking kind of noise. So I find that the acoustic really benefits from the, the, the plectrum, the wooden plectrum more, but I think in terms of the electric, it's great feel. And I was worried that they would be a bit too thick for me because I'm normally used to playing like a, a 0.7 mm -hmm. you know, kind of mid-range pick, but uh, they're, they're really grippy and they kind of bite into the strings well and they don't wear down very quick. So I, I quite, I'm quite interested to hear why you even started the thing, wh where it came about. So it just started as a hobby more mm -hmm. than anything. You touched on a lot of things there that are, yeah. are very true. And I, I love hearing that kind of feedback, mm -hmm. especially from a player, like, you know, that sort of detailed mm -hmm. kind of um, feedback. It's, I, I just love it. Um, so the way it started is I, um, when I moved to Alberta uh, about 15 years ago, I started a renovation company. Mm -hmm. So I've basically been like a lifelong entrepreneur. Like okay. I was kind of like the lemonade stand kid. <laughs> and then in high school, um, I had a hot dog stand, like that kind of stuff. Like mm -hmm. I've never had a real job yep, yep. per se. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so anyway, I moved to Alberta and started a renovation company, mostly doing painting, drywall, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, carpentry things as well. Yep. And so I have you know, a, a garage full of tools and, you know, everything that a, a handyman would kind of have. Mm. And um, I was in a wood shop here in Calgary one day and um, looking for something else. And I just kind of stumbled upon this piece of wood that was just like the perfect thickness. When I saw it, I was like, oh, that'd be really cool to make wood picks out of. Mm -hmm and a little bit thinner than the wood on a fingerboard on an acoustic guitar yeah. would be. And it kind of looked like that. It was sort of like a rosewood or something like that. And so I bought it and then just kind of um, shortly around that time, I had bought a house my, for myself and it was a fixer upper. So I was renovating it. And so all my sort of free time was going on fixing up this house. So the piece of wood like kind of sat in a quarter in my basement for mm -hmm. like, you know, four or five years. Yep. And I kind of stumbled on it one day and I was like, oh yeah, I was going to make picks out of that. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of looked into it and um, like I said, I'm born and raised in Nova Scotia um, and uh, Cape Breton Island is where I'm from. Okay. And so um, we're a really proud people from mm -hmm. Cape Breton. We're, you know, um, and we're, you know, constantly homesick and, you know, longing <laughs> for home and yep. uh, proud of where we come from. So I thought it'd be really cool to put, um, uh, engrave Cape Breton Island on the pick yep. because this piece of wood would have only given me like, you know, 30 picks or something like that. Sure. And that's all it was. It was just, you know, like I thought it'd be kind of fun and something cool to do. So I looked into, you know, the engraving process and found someone to do that. And I made these picks up and that was basically it. And mm -hmm. so I gave some to some friends and my brother is a musician and gave some to him, you know, set them up and got some feedback. And they're like, these are kind of fun. They're mm -hmm. cool, you know, it's different. And yeah. so it just sort of started from there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, after that, I looked into making the wood in a different way and kind of experimented with different kinds of woods. Um, and it was mainly just a pure hobby for myself. It's just something fun to do. Yep. And, you know, like as I'd get a new pick, I'd be really excited and like play guitar for like four hours in a night, just <laughs> trying them out. And then um, after probably about, you know, six, 12 months or so of that, the entrepreneur in me kicked in. Because at that point, I was, it was they were kind of getting a little more refined. And yeah. I kind of had a feel for what woods worked best and what didn't. And sure. um, So then I was like, you know, maybe I could sell these things. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I kind of started thinking about it more like commercially. And, and then along came Tree Picks. Amazing. When you were going through that initial product development stage, what kind of woods were you trying and weren't working? And what was that kind of process? Yeah, so they're all made out of hardwoods. Mm -hmm. um, so the easy way to tell the difference between hardwood and softwood is hardwood, basically, there's more science behind it, but to dumb it down, hardwood trees have leaves and softwood trees have needles. Yep. So they're all sort of exotic hardwoods. Um, maple was one of the first ones I did and cherry wood as well. Um, and uh, the one that didn't work um, was teak. Okay. Yeah, I really thought teak was gonna 
mm-hmm. work well, and that didn't work. Um, I remember trying olive wood. That didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the reason they weren't working? They just didn't seem to hold up. Okay. Um, and that's kind of one of the things about a wooden pick is that the, you, you mentioned that you found they didn't wear down that fast, but yeah. other people find they do. Like okay. that's one of the first questions mm-hmm. when I, you know. I had like, so, that concern when I bought them. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and most people do. Mm-hmm. Like that's one of the first questions, they, how do they wear? And the answer is it, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> so it really depends on the player, um, how hard they strum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the type of wood, because the density of the wood will change. So, like, you know, we make them out of cherry wood, but that's a softer hardwood yeah. than, say, purple heart is. Mm-hmm. So, in theory, a purple heart wood will last longer than cherry will. Yeah. But the short answer is, generally speaking, a wood pick will wear down faster than a plastic pick. Of course. Um, yeah. You know, like I always tell people, they're not bulletproof. And, yeah. you know, some people don't like that and don't want to try it for that reason. And I can appreciate that, you know. Yeah, I um, understand that. I understand. But, I mean, with the with a pick, I don't know, I don't know about you, but there's that myth, that old continuous joke that happens where you drop a guitar pick and it goes to another dimension and where it is. So I exactly. tend to lose picks before they ever wear out anyway. So. That's what I, that's like when we're doing like some kind of live event where yeah. we're selling them, I usually, that's a line that I'll tell people. I'm like, you're probably going to lose this before you'll break it or wear out, yeah. you know, so. Definitely. So no, that's interesting to hear the different types of wood. And like, I know balsa wood's a hardwood, which wouldn't work as a guitar pick. That's right. Yeah. So balsa is like a super soft hardwood. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like, it's technically a hardwood, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, more of a softwood kind of. So. Yeah, because the first time I saw it and played it, I thought this has like a feel of like when you play a ukulele pick, mm. it's yeah, kind yeah. of has a softer texture. And I thought this would work really well for that as well. Yeah. Um, so that was more... We're actually was... developing a ukulele pick. Uh, it's going to be coming out in the fall. So. Oh, cool. Right, yeah. well, there's a little plug for you. <laughs> um, that's cool. So in terms of... Because you don't just make them out of wood. You actually have this service where you offer to plant trees with every pick that's purchased. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd like to know a bit more about the intricacies of that and how that works. Yeah, so we call the tree picks... Um, because they're made from wood, from mm-hmm. trees, and then and we plant a tree for everyone we sell. So when I came up with the name of the company, Tree Picks, it, um, you know, after like very shortly after that, I was like, I wonder like how feasible would it be to plant a tree for every pick you sell? Mm-hmm. And so when I kind of looked into it, like initially I was like, that's probably a crazy idea. Yeah. Um, and then when I looked into it, um, I realized it's not that crazy. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we don't plant the trees. Yeah. So, um, like, I'm not out in a field with a shovel digging a <laughs> hole kind this. of thing. <laughs> um, so the way we do it is you can buy a seedling mm-hmm. very cheap. Mm-hmm. So as cheap as, like, 14 cents mm-hmm. when you buy them in big volumes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, in Canada every year, like, I don't know, it could be billions, like millions and millions of trees get planted every year. Yeah. So um, there's one company that I was talking to in Nova Scotia, and... They said, you know, the, I was talking to the guy and he's like, you know, we're kind of like one of the smaller companies that we do about 3 million trees a year that they grow and plant. Wow. And in my head, I was like, that's small? small? Like, holy smokes, yeah. like yeah, yeah. 3 million is like, imagine if you had like 3 million pennies. Yeah, yeah. Just like the sheer space that that would take. Mm-hmm. Um, the short answer is, so we buy a seedling and then we donate them to different charity groups. Mm-hmm. Or there's also just some people who have like a ton of land. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they'll... It, happily take the trees and plant them on their land because they're just trying to, you know, sort of reforest sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So that's that's basically the process. So okay. I love it when, like, we'll, you know, uh, when we advertise online, we, like, that's one of our sales pitches is that, you know, we plant a tree for every pick we sell. And some people will comment saying, like, that's possible, no way, it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, I... I I, I love it, but it, it also kind of drives me crazy a little bit because you know, like, it's like these sort of the keyboard warriors who are like, they don't know anything about it. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, there's different companies where like you can like sign up for a service and they'll plant a tree for like $2. And mm-hmm. so they think it's, you know, that's what it costs to plant a tree mm-hmm. um, when, you know, like we're buying a seedling for 14 cents, you know. Mm-hmm. So like if it was $2 each, you're, it would just be impossible, yeah. you know. So, so yeah, so like that's, basically just built into the price and that's that's how it happens it's cool so you work with our specific supplier out in nova scotia or yeah so i'm originally from there like yeah. i said and so like it's kind of a small place in the sense and like people everyone just knows everyone mm-hmm. so like i knew of a place where you could buy those seedlings back there so i was like oh i'll just go there first and kind of look into yeah. it and kind of like i was saying earlier we're sort of like a proud people you know so i i, I like the idea of 
find where you're from. Yeah, there, and the, you know, the trees get planted there, and that's so it. It kind of makes me feel. I like that. You know, there's something, something warm and cozy about that. Yeah, definitely. So, so you you touched on the the variety of picks that you went through and developed. So it'd be good to know and for you to explain directly the different types that you offer and what different players or styles would be suited to different picks. Yeah, there's kind of something for everybody. Um, so like, that's one of the first questions I'll ask is when someone comes in, I'm like, what do you mostly play? And if they tell me they're like, you know, more metal or a hard rock or something like that, I'll say, okay, you probably want to try the purple heart or like mm -hmm. a super hard one. Um, but we basically make them out of two shapes. So um, a slight variation of like the the teardrop shape. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of made it a little bit sharper, but not much. Okay. Um, it just seemed to work a little better for wood. Yep. And then the jazz shape. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's this shape is um, ours are just slightly bigger than a Jazz 3 and mm -hmm. smaller than a Jazz XL. Okay. So they're kind of in between those two shapes. Yep. Um, the Jazz 3 shape, it just, there was something about it with wood. It just it was like a pinch too small. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we just uh, actually tomorrow is going to go live on our website as a triangle base pick oh, wow. um, made out of ebony. So the, we make them out of six main woods. So um, cherry, maple, walnut, zebra wood, purple heart, and now ebony. Mm -hmm. Um, are the, the main ones that we kind of work with. And we're always kind of like playing around and testing with different ones. Mm -hmm. But um, so, you know, it's really super subjective because all of those woods will sound a little bit different mm -hmm. depending on the type of wood they are. So like I said before, like a chair is a really soft one. So that's probably going to sound warmer to, than yeah. Purple Heart, which is a harder wood mm -hmm. that will give you a kind of a brighter tone. So I had someone once describe it as, like when they kind of play through the different picks, it's kind of like having an EQ knob on an acoustic mm -hmm. because like, you know, one will sound like a pinch brighter or a little warmer or that kind of thing. Um, and so like when people ask me, they'll say like, what's the best one for acoustic or what's the best one for electric or whatever. And I usually, we sell a sample pack where you can get one of each of the different woods. Yeah. Um, and I usually encourage people to do that because it's super subjective. Mm -hmm. um, you might like the maple and I might like the zebra wood mm -hmm. or, you know, walnut, that kind of thing. Um, there's no real kind of science, you know. Yeah. Um, and it will also change on, you know, what kind of guitar you're using. Like, so, uh, you know, a purple heart might sound brighter, but if, you know, um, you're using it, say, on a cedar top, guitar, um, that's probably going to sound more mellow, you know, and yeah. so all those things kind of come into play. So that's why it's, it's really subjective, um, but they all work on anything. Um, and that, that's kind of it, you know, like the, the player will find that they like one for a particular reason. Mm -hmm. That's totally up to them, you know, and it could just be the way it feels on the strings, you know, the tone it gives. Um, I have some people, like I basically heard it all. Like I've, had people say, you know, I really like the cherry one because it's a mellow, and then someone else will say, I really like the cherry one because it sounds bright. <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, you know, like I'm, yeah. they're not wrong. You no, know, if, that's, no. if it sounds bright to them, that's great. Um, you know, but there's no, uh, I like different things for different kind of guitars or mm -hmm. different, like I find, I, you know, um, like I like the cherry or maple when I'm on nylon, like a ukulele or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, when I play mandolin, I almost exclusively use the Zebra Jazz one. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I people will give me that kind of feedback, too. They say, I like the maple on the acoustic, but I like the walnut on my electric. Yeah, and it's, there's no real... real it depends kind of, on what you're playing. It also depends on what what you're actually playing on the guitar, like chords, of course. lead. It really makes a difference. And even just the difference between playing, like, the, the PRS, like, Custom 24 with the Tumbuckers, or sure. switching to, like, a single coil telly or something... Um, it just opens up this sonic characteristic. I didn't get that same variety when I was using plastic picks. Mm -hmm. I just didn't. I wasn't as excited to pick it up. Where now I'm like, oh, which pick should I use? It's it's more of a decision process. Yeah. And I'm, which is a good and a bad thing because I'm like, oh god, I've got to figure out that as well as on my <laughs> tone on my amp and stuff. Um, but yeah, I just love that it just gives you th that variety. It's, it's really yeah, cool. and on an electric, I had someone describe it once as it's like a almost like a delayed or muted attack yeah um and so for me like you hear the tone more so on an acoustic and on an electric it's you know it definitely has a you know there's some tonal things going on but i think it's more of a feel and an attack definitely you know that's um, what i mean more than yeah. actual sound because you know mm -hmm. electric's just 
strings moving over a magnet kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's a limitation on what you do, but the, on the yeah. acoustic, definitely. And I, I think on top of my head, I can't really think which I prefer. It tends to be what hmm. I don't know. It's different. I do like the the zebra ones and the purple heart ones for playing electric. I must admit. Sure. Um, and then the maple one does work well for chord chordal work on acoustic. It mm -hmm. tends to come through as the preference at the moment, but if I want to have a bit more clarity, but not as much as a plastic pick, I'll probably go with a zebra one on hmm. on the acoustic. It just tends to work. And I mean, I play a Martin, which is more one of like a mellower sounding guitar in, in general, rather than like a Taylor's quite bright, so it might mm -hmm. need more of a, a pick that kind of muffles the sound a bit more. But yeah, it's all about the attack. I think it really just makes it so you can customize. And I'm, I'm overwhelmed with how yeah. <laughs> how well, different and I have like some people who tell me like they love them in the studio mm -hmm. for that reason because yeah. like you know they'll mix it up to, on every track depending on what's going on mm -hmm. um other people they, yeah they like to record with them but they find it's not like ideal for gigging mm -hmm. um and so they use them in the studio and then some people you know like i've, I've heard it all you know like yeah. i hate them on an electric but i love them on an acoustic right. and then the next person might say, I love them on an acoustic, but I hate them on an electric. Mm -hmm. Or I, don't, I might have said the same thing, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, exactly. The opposite, right? Yeah. And um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a very subjective thing, you know. And, but usually what happens is as people play them, um, they narrow it down to one or two. Mm -hmm. Like of the six picks they get, they usually yeah. kind of end up sticking to one for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then... So after you get the, the sample pack from her, you can order just that wood. Mm -hmm. So if it is the Purple Heart one that you like, you can order just the Purple Heart. You don't have to, you know, buy the other five again kind yeah. of things. So. so you make the picks yourself? Yes. In-house yeah. with mach machines and stuff. So you can actually customize, because I know you do prints and stuff on yeah, that. Yeah, so obviously. they get laser engraved mm -hmm. and cut, and then after that they get sanded and oiled and whatnot. So, yeah. But the laser engraver can basically put anything on them. Okay. Um, designs, logos, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, we mostly do that kind of stuff on the cherry and the maple woods. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it's it's basically like a printer on a computer. So you just do the design work and you hit print, and mm -hmm. you know a piece of paper comes out. It's basically the same thing. You do the design work and you hit print, and then the laser engraver does its thing on the wood. And yeah. um, so yeah, they're they're very easily customizable. That's cool. So, I mean, I'm not the first person to play these things, obviously. So, who would I have heard of that has kind of adopted these and embraced these picks? Have you got any like higher profile names? That um, the I've given them to so many people. Yeah. Like some that are are very famous, mm -hmm. some that are you know um, up and coming, mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing. But um, the probably the most renowned guitar player that's ever tried them was John Schofield. Okay, yeah. Um, so for those who don't know, John Schofield's a, a really renowned and respected jazz guitar player. He's a phenomenal jazz yeah. player. Quite um, unique jazz player as well. Yeah, right? totally. So he, you know, was playing with Miles Davis in the 80s. Yeah. Um, like on all the Bitches Brews stuff, mm -hmm. I believe. And um, anyway, he was playing in Calgary. It was probably three or four years ago with a band called Hudson. Okay. And um, this was like really, really early days of starting tree picks. Like it probably wasn't even called tree picks. And <laughs> it was back in the stage when I was just making them for fun and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I had tickets to the show and I, I made some up with his name on them. And, you know, it was like in hopes, like going to maybe hang out by the back door, you know, to, to give them to him and meet Groupie, him. But I also <laughs> just wanted to meet him because yeah. they've been a fan. And, yeah, yeah. um, so after the show, they did a, a signing in the lobby. So I didn't have to like, you know, go hang out by the back door. Um, so they came out and so there was a lineup. So I bought a CD and I met the band. Jack Dejanet was in the, the oh, band. He's cool. just like one of the best jazz drummers ever. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I, I said, you know, it's a pleasure to meet you. I said, I make these picks and you know, I'd, I'd like to you know, give you some as a gift. And he looked at them and he was, oh, these are kind of cool. And then he looked closer and he saw that his name was on it. And he's like, oh, this is super cool. And, <laughs> So he was, you know, really kind of neat. And so I got a picture with him and Jack, and like he's holding the pickup like that, like oh, with a cool. big smile on his face. And uh, I said, "Look, you know," I said, "I just kind of make these for fun, and you know, I'd love to get some feedback, you know." Um, and so I, he said, "You know, email me, and I'll I'll let you know." And you know, probably they were on the road for another couple of weeks, so I, I I didn't bug him. So I I tracked down his email address and sent him a note, and didn't hear anything for a little bit, and then. Um, it's kind of a, a long story that I'm dragging out, but a friend of mine, and he called me one Friday night here in Calgary, and he said, what are you doing? 
And I said, not much. And he said, our lead singer got strep throat. Mm-hmm. You know, can you can you bail us out? Like this was like eight o'clock and they were going on stage at like 9.30. <laughs> so I grabbed the guitar, grabbed some picks and I went down and did the gig. But the picks I was playing around with then was like a super soft wood. Mm-hmm. And um, so I took them to the gig, played the thing with them. And like after a set or two, like I shredded them. Mm-hmm. Like they were just, it weren't going to work. Yeah, but yeah. I left the gig that night like super discouraged. And I was oh, like, okay. oh, you know, like maybe this is not a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I thought these were going to be cool. And so I was kind of like all down in the dumps about it. And so, you know, like kind of slept like crap that night. The next morning I woke up and I checked my email and there was an email from John Schofield. Mm -hmm. And it said, hey, Adam, you know, like, thanks very much for the pics. I tried them out and, you know, it's a really unique tone and, and, you know, it's, it was cool. And, you know, like, I wish you well, like, good luck. Wow. And like that kind of like saved the company before it started. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Like it, it was almost like. The, the timing couldn't have been better. Mm-hmm. You know, if he had to wait like another two weeks, I don't know, <laughs> who knows. But yeah, like, yeah. it was just like serendipity, I don't know, whatever. But he, he kind of saved the company before it even started. You well, know? I wonder if he's even so, aware. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, probably not. But if I ever get to meet him again, like I'm going to give him the biggest handshake and tell him that story because like he probably, you know, hopefully he'll remember getting the wood picks, but I don't think he realized how much that email meant to me at the time. That's amazing. Yeah. So from that point on, how how has it grown and developed? So I know you're looking to move. Is the moment you kind of make them in your house? And well, yeah, there's a shared space that I work right, out okay. of, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do a lot of it at home mm-hmm. in my garage as well. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the beautiful things about picks is that they're small and light, so they're easy to send anywhere in the yep. world. Yeah. And um, but because of that too, like they're pretty easy to make. Mm-hmm. Like they don't take up a lot of space necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not like you're making furniture or that mm-hmm. kind of thing. You need crates to pack things. Sure. Like, it's all pretty confined. It's a good choice as a product. Yeah, yeah exactly. But it, it's kind of grown to the point now where it's, you know, I need to, you know, move to like a full, uh, a, you know, dedicated space kind of thing. And mm-hmm. and also, you know, get more help. Mm-hmm. So I have some part-time workers that help and whatnot, but like it's 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 at the point now where, you know, I got to scale it up a little bit, the, the team at least to help me out. So. That's cool. I mean, they're really, I've got some here, they're really nicely finished. You know, they look nice and... The nice balance of being like you know oiled and treated, but not looking like overly processed and yeah. polished and stuff. Like, really that was nice. something I played around with too. Like when starting, that like I experimented with you know finishing them with different like varnishes and mm-hmm. polyurethanes and stuff like that, and it just didn't feel right. You know, yeah. um, I don't think it would really change the tone all that much, mm-hmm. um, but it was more. Um, I find. Like the oil, it almost, ra- well, it does raise the grain in the wood a little yeah, bit, sure. so it'll give yeah. it like a little bit of grip, mm-hmm. but it just, there was something about the look and feel, like oil was just the way to go. Yeah, it looks so, so cool. And, they, yeah. and the laser printer is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty wild machine. So what's, is there any meaning behind the logo? Is that kind of? Um, no. So if you look at it really close, it's a tree and there's, the leaves are picks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was just kind of it. I, cool. uh, I was working with the designer out of Ontario mm-hmm. and, um, you know, uh, I just kind of like scribbled something out on a napkin and I was like, this is the idea I have. And then we kind of went back and forth and we kind of nailed it down like that. And she was uh, lovely to work with because like I was, it's, it's weird because in some ways, like I'll look at a, zi- a design and I can make a decision like really quick on yeah. it. Like, no, that's fine. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And then other times, like with this one, I knew it was going to be something like that one. I, w- I was very micromanaging that one. Like I would say, you know, can you take this one leaf on the tree and move it, you know, yeah. seven degrees, you know, just turn it a little bit and yeah. like put this one. And, and part of it, I was thinking like the grip. So when you hold it, like your finger's going to hit the logo. So there was reasons to it. It was yeah, probably yeah, yeah. look, but there was also for like when you actually have the thing in your hand, mm-hmm. um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of how the, the logo came there. That's really so. cool. I, that's, yeah. I didn't even notice that they were picks. That's even better. That's, yeah, if you, so on my thing, you can... Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, you, you say it. That's, that's incredible. Just kinda, yeah. That's cool. So uh, how do you get the wood then? Where, where does that come from? So um, it's all done in Calgary. So the wood is, there's kind of, um, it gets broken down into two categories. There's domestic and exotic. Mm-hmm. So domestic would be stuff that's native to Canada. Mm-hmm. So the domestics would be maple, cherry, and walnut. Mm-hmm. Canada obviously has a ton of maple. Yeah. Um, 
uh, walnut grows in southern Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the only place in Canada, but I could be wrong on that. And then the exotic woods like ebony, um, purple heart, uh, so zebra pretty, wood. Yeah. Um, zebra wood, e ebony and zebra come from Africa, and purple heart sort of like Central America, Belize, mm -hmm. those Costa Rica, those kinds of countries. Yeah. Um, and uh, so there's a uh, a cabinet shop in town that I work with. Mm -hmm. And they basically save their scrap woods. And then they, um, so they do like massive, big, big projects. And mm -hmm. so when they're putting wood, you know, gluing wood onto something, there'll be pieces that hang over. Mm -hmm. um, or also when they order wood, they're ordering wood in like big quantities. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, they're doing like stuff for like really high end homes and projects and stuff like yeah. that where like the wood has to look great. Mm -hmm. So let's say they ordered 100 sheets of wood maybe you know 85 of them or 90 of them are, are good to use and the other 10 they're fine mm -hmm. but they're not good enough to make cabinets or a desk or something yep. out of um so they put that aside and but they're perfect for me mm -hmm. because you know like if the grain's not perfectly straight or whatever it doesn't yeah. matter yeah, yeah. when you're making a one inch guitar pick mm -hmm. so um so it's basically wood that kind of you know would have you know it could have gone to waste yeah. yeah sort of right yeah, yeah. um it would sort of be their seconds um, and so, yeah, so it's, it's all sourced in Calgary locally. And That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so it sounds like you've got a lot of variety in the picks and, and the company seems to be taking off in a way. You're kind of starting to get more people adopting them and wide, wider spreading the kind of the message. And it's quite a unique company in the way that um, you kind of source wood, you offset the impact and all these sorts of things. It's really unique in the guitar world, I think. It's kind of... There's not many people doing it, which is really cool. Yeah, it seems like um, there's kind of a generational um, change going on. Mm -hmm. Like the, the younger generation is seem to be more open to those kinds of products and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And they, they seem to be um, kind of like adopting that kind of, you know, the, in, you know, just sort of supporting companies that kind of have a bit of a social conscience yeah and um, more of a purpose it's definitely like that demographic yeah, yeah. um but I, like i always tell people we're not a charity like we're yeah, definitely yeah, yeah, a company yeah, yeah. um you know it's like we're a for-profit business mm -hmm. like trying to make a living of course yeah. um but you know we're we're trying to do it in a way where we can you know just kind of feel good about it at the same time mm -hmm. so you know if it's the you know the tree plant is one of that too but like we just try to make decisions like you know sourcing wood that is you know, not perfect to a cabinet guy, but great for us, you mm -hmm. know, as opposed to just going out and buying wood. Yeah. Um, you know, we, so we're, we just try to make choices like that, that, you know, just, you know, we just feel good about it. No, it makes a difference. I think it's really important to, to make that leap and show people that that's a path. And, you know, I think it's very easy for just go down the music shop and go, well, I need more picks. Let's go buy some picks. Mm -hmm. They're always plastic and, and just, I don't know, the versatility of the wood one. It's not, it's not just the environment thing for me. It sounds better and it's just something that everyone should be adopting, I think. So. Well, yeah. Like, I never tell people that they sound better. They yeah. say, like, are they better than plastic? I'm like, no. Yeah. They're, they're better than plastic if you think they are. Exactly, yeah. Like, but, I, yeah. You know, and, but, and I, I'm thrilled that you love them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, it's, it's very subjective. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I'm trying to get guitar players just to think differently about yeah. their pick. Mm -hmm. um, Even if there's just as an option as well as the plastic. Yeah, one. exactly. Yeah. And, you know, like, some people you may just use wood thing for uh, you know a, just a particular mm -hmm. event so it yep. might just be on an acoustic it might be for one song you know mm -hmm. whatever it is um, but yeah I'm trying to you know get people just to think like I'm you know I mentioned it before like I'm the first guy that's excited to buy a new guitar because of how it sounds and feels or a pedal or an amp like yeah. we're always trying to like play around with tone mm -hmm. but you know um, I think a lot of people underestimate how much the pick can affect your tone. Yep. Like everything comes into play, the kind of wood that your guitar is made out of, the type of strings you have. Mm -hmm. um, like it's all part of the, the chain, but um, like a $3 pick can make a big difference mm -hmm. like in your tone for sure. So um, I'm just trying to get people to think like a little bit outside the box. And like I'm very aware too that, you know, if you're 50 years old, you've only been using plastic picks for probably 40 years, yep. you know, like that, it's it's a leap for you to try to think to use something different. So, yep. you know, and that's, a, it's a challenge for us, but I, I it's, it's something that I get excited about because more often than not, 
when I convince someone to give it a shot, they try it and they, they usually like it. Mm-hmm. Well, what more do you need to know? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been great to have you on. I really oh, appreciate my you pleasure. coming on, Adam, yeah. and having a chat. The The website to look at is treepix.com. Check them out. Uh, definitely worth ordering a sample pack like Adam recommended because it just gives you kind of the option to try all these different woods and, and types. And it sounds like they're bringing more to the range every every kind of month, really. So they're investing a lot of time uh, into the research and development of different and picks, and that's quite exciting and interesting. Uh, and also you get to feel a little bit better about uh, buying your equipment uh, by offsetting it with a, a new tree planted in Nova Scotia. Thanks for joining us for the, for the show, and if you can like and subscribe and check out Adam's website, treepicks.com, uh, that would be great. Thanks for stopping by, and I will see you in the next show.